All right, welcome back to the final Cheer Room review. This is number nine. Number nine. That's right. Just released today. Um, I know if you heard it like once. So yeah, I just heard it like an hour ago. So I, I heard like the releases for it, the the singles, and, and I've been listening to it. I only heard actually I only heard the first single, which was the uh, uh, Catastrophist, uh, which is a phenomenal song. We'll get to in a second. But I just want to start with the first track. Um, they brought back for this one the intro because they didn't really have one for the last one. I mean, obviously the IX, which is Roman numeral nine, mm. that makes sense to me is why it was named that. I thought it was interesting. It was different than any other of the entrances because if you listen to, say, you know, Ascendancy or In Waves, it's like an impending doom. And for this one, it was a little different. It was a build up, but it wasn't like like something was about to explode. I don't know. What do you think about the intro? Yeah, so I thought the intro because you know they released it with the music video for what the dead men say um where it starts with just the whole band so i thought that was the whole intro but yeah the first minute is like some ambient uh kind of like the same piece of music that the band plays and then it kind of you know stops and then it kicks into what we heard in the video which is pretty cool i uh i looked up an interview and paulo said like when the band starts that was from there that was originally part of the title track, mm. but they split it because, um, I don't know, something with streaming or... I, I forgot what it said exactly, but they said it was originally one song, but they split it just to... Oh, so there wasn't going to be no intro at all? There was, just that, like, the first minute, though. Oh, okay. Or I think. I think they wrote it. I don't know. Fucking, I'll link the article. You can check it out yourself. But yeah, but th- I thought the um, it was different. The intro was different than and then the other ones, which I like. So um, right, because it, it had like an actual band playing. Yeah. The other intros were just like weird ambient pieces. Um, so this one had like the full band just yeah kicking right in. Yeah, I thought that was which... uh, yeah, I thought that was different. So I like that. Um, is there anything else you have on that first one, or you want to move on? Nope. And it leads right into the top track. What the dead men say. This is probably one of my favorites on the album. So this one has, um, what, what I really like about it, and in, in general this this album, which is different than like the other ones in the sense that I can actually, like most of the choruses in this entire tr- in this entire album is very, very uh, catchy. Like they're very, um, the choruses are very good. So I liked them, like the majority of them are really, really good. This is one of them. It's just, it sticks in your head uh, when he says what the dead men say. Uh, that's like my favorite part is just the chorus. Um, it has like the that t- the title track leading to it is what is what kicks it in in the same way that you, you've heard in the other um, track or in the other albums where obviously the it's a build up for the the title track and this is the same way it's just executed a little bit differently and I really liked how they um, how they really mixed sounds in, in, not just in the song but in this album in particular like you hear bits and pieces of the entire um, of their entire discography but yeah that's that's my take on that first track. Yeah, because I mean, I, I've already reviewed all these singles on my own, so I'm just going to go briefly. Um, yeah, this, I love this track. Uh, very catchy, like you said. The middle part is like this prog, like crazy goodness with a bunch of riffs that are pretty awesome. I also really like how Alex goes into the chorus where he like kind of goes on the toms. And you, you, it's kind of like, like, a, like a roller coaster. Like where you kind of go up, or like down, and then like up immediately again. Where it was so, like, it's like, boom. Yeah, yeah. So Alex, Alex is a man. He's a machine. Like, even in the parts where of the album where I was like, meh, like a couple of songs, it, he, it was like what what kept me interested was was the drums. Was just how insane he was throughout the entire album. It was a consistent like roller coaster ride. So yeah, I agree with that. So yeah, and it leads into uh, the Catastrophist, which is the, the single that they re- the first single they released. Mm-hmm. I really like the Catastrophist. I thought it was it's fitting for like kind of what's going on right now. And I saw an interview that that Matt did about um, well not an interview but he did he was streaming and uh, he was asked that if if the Catastrophist was written kind of in in, in today's uh, like what is it in today's timeline it, it like based on what's going on right now and and it wasn't and that's what I really like about it is that it was just like a um, you know a, a feeling of, of, of something that destroys um, what you've built so I really I really like that and um, if it's very fitting like I said and again the chorus super catchy so I, I love what they did with the song I have no complaints at all 
Yeah, definitely the song I've heard the most, just because it was the first single. And, you know, we've, we've both already reviewed this yeah. single, so we can check that out. But, yeah, then we go into Amongst the Shadows and the Stones. Okay, so I, I have I have some stuff to say about that one. Okay. The beginning of it, I thought was going to, like, when I first listened, the first part of it, like, uh, the build-up, I, I was like, ah, eh, I don't really, I'm not feeling it. But then, like, it kicks in to, like, the chorus, and, oh, man, like, it, it just... It just caught me. I was like, oh, okay, I see what they were going with. Yeah, this is definitely the most extreme song on the album. In my single review, I was like, yeah, I don't know about this one. Like, it's brutal, yeah, but, like, you know, so is Chaos Reigns, and that wasn't my favorite That's what song. it felt like. It was reminiscent to Chaos Reigns, oh. but with, like, an actual chorus. Right. And that's what I really liked about it. Yeah. I, it, it, balanced, it balanced that aggression with the, like, the lull you to sleep type chorus so well. I really liked it. Right, yeah. Uh, the more I heard it, it definitely grew on me. Like I said, I was like, I, I just need a couple listens, and it's definitely growing on me as, like, just a, such a hard, hard track, man. Yeah, so it was uh, it was revisiting. It, it's kind of like showing you what the band is capable of in this song because they go from real heavy, and then they soften it up, and then they go back again. Something that Trivium is really good at, and, you, and like, they, like, mastered in, in Shogun. So, um, yeah, so then moving on to number five, Bleed Into Me, that one's uh, like what you call their radio-friendly song, I guess. Uh, really good job of, uh, of being uh, another catchy chorus that you could play on the radio that's not too aggressive. And if, you don't really, if you're not really into heavy metal, it's a song that you can essentially uh, allow yourself to become part of the album. I, I, would, I would show you that song if you weren't into heavy screaming or anything like that before I show you any of the other ones. Right, yeah. I, I Before I compared the song to Endless, like, this is the Endless Night of the album, but the more I thought about it, it's more like Built a Fall, where, like, it's not super clean, but it's not super hard. Like, it is the radio-friendly one, but it also has some edge to it. Yeah, so, so it's, still, it's, still, uh, it's still a Trivium song, and that's something to keep in mind. It's a Trivium song. It's just a, a much more, uh, what do you call it, like, I guess... Uh, new to metal friendly type listen. The Defiant, Defiant. Oh man, that song. That song was probably one of my favorites off that album. Yeah, when I um <clears throat> when I first heard it, honestly, I was like, uh, I don't know about this one. And the yeah. second time, I was like, holy shit! I think this is probably like the most epic song on the album. Yep. Yeah, I really like the message behind it. Uh, it. It's just you can tell it comes from a real place just because of of how angry he is when he's singing those lyrics. So I think that this comes. Matt's very good at uh, at putting emotion into 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 lyrics that you can grasp. You know if that makes sense. So that's what I really liked about the Defiant is is it is it's trying to prove a point, something that's happened maybe in his life, and you really feel the emotion in this song. That's what I love about the Trivium is that they're able to do that. And this song did it like brilliantly. It was the chorus is catchy. Again, most of the album is like this, so it's really good. Yeah, also like in the beginning, like I had strong in waves vibes. Like yeah. with the guitar harmonies and shit. I was like, yeah, this is something like straight off that album. But like again, with his like great singing, like the singing in the chorus. Is yeah, that's incredible. where he proved what he could do as a vocalist. And man, man it was just he went all out in this one. Yeah. So yeah, um, Defiant is definitely one of the best best tracks in the album. Yeah, easily. I also just wrote down the chord progression, the chorus. I really like too. That entire song was brilliant. I, yeah. I, I loved it. I, I listened to that song and was completely happy with it the entire way. I'd say that's like the betrayer of this album. Ooh, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd compare it to The Betrayer. Not like the heaviness, but like this is the song I think people are going to know off of this album. Yeah, so I think that w what you mean by that is like it, it's one of those songs that comes from a real place and like people can relate to. That's what I like about it. You could, I could show this I could show this song uh, next to obviously Bleed Into Me. Uh, I could show this song to, to the new metal listener and I'm sure they'd like it. Right. Sickness Unto You. So this is the one of those songs that I said that I, I felt mad about. Maybe I need to listen to it a couple more times. But it's just... I don't know. It's, it's just not... doesn't catch my interest. I love what they did instrumentally, but that's about it. This is, I think, the second longest besides Catastrophist. And, like, honestly, the first half, I'm kind of like, you know, whatever about. But then, I don't know, like, something happens in the, like, in the middle of the song. And then, like... I swear it's like part of Shogun comes out where they're just going riff after riff of just craziness. 
Yeah, I definitely really like the second half, but I think the first half is going to take some time to really get into. Yeah, it takes a couple listens, I think. Um, that's some, sometimes it happens with Trivium songs. Is you, you need to listen to them a couple... It's an acquired taste, basically. So you need to listen to it a couple times, and uh, and then as you start to kind of uh, kind of like it over time. But yeah, that's that's kind of... It was a meh track for me right as of right now. So that's all I got. Yeah, so scattering the ashes. This one was a little better. I felt it started off a little meh, too. But then, uh, again, once it kicks into the chorus, it's uh, I liked it. Yeah, um, if you've been keeping up with my single reviews, um, you know that I have a distaste for the bass tone on this album, um, just because it's super, like, grainy, kind yeah. of like, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? It has that tone. But I was going to say, in this song, it actually kind of works for me. Like, the verse, it has such a great groove with Paolo and Alex. Oh, yeah, that's another thing is... is, uh, is One thing that we forgot to mention, too. But, yeah, this one thing that I really like is, is how... How uh, how much of a groove they had this entire album too, so that's a good point to bring up. That that's all I wanted to add. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the just the verses are so cool sounding. Um, yeah, this is I think this was the this is more of a ballad or not a ballad, but like the clean, a uh, more clean song than Bleed Into Me. Like this is the the cleanest they got they go on this album. And, and also you can hear Paula doing ba- uh, backup vocals, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, overall, not bad. Uh, I thought it was all right, and not not the best, not my favorite one, like I said. But it but it was better than I think. Uh, Sickness onto you. All right, so uh, that moves on to uh, bending the arc to, to fear. fear. So uh, it was again another two two songs I, that were mad to me, and and that was Sickness onto you and bending the arc to fear. I just I didn't find uh, I didn't find that it meshed well the whole song like the different parts of it in as a unit i just felt that maybe the progression of the song wasn't wasn't my favorite yeah again just like sickness unto you for some reason the second half just appeals to me so much more than the first half then like towards the end uh matt has like an extended scream and then you know paulo kicks in with a bass line and like the first the i mean the last minute of that song i think is like some of the best on this whole album but yeah, I think the the first time I heard this song, I was like, holy shit, this is probably my favorite song in the album. But then going back, I, I don't know. I was like, I mean, it's okay, but it's definitely not the best. Yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't anything to to like brag about, I don't think. But it was it was good because they're I mean they're a talented band. So either way, whatever they make is is still going to be some crazy parts to it instrumentally. But like I said, the the way that the song was put together uh, wasn't my favorite. So. Yeah. Yeah, all right, so that we go down to number 10, which is the final one. This is kind of a shorter album, not the shortest. I mean, Vengeance Falls was 10 tracks, too, but... Actually, this, like, minute-wise, this is the shortest album they've done. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. This one's called The Ones We Leave Behind, and this one was really good. I felt that this was a great exit song. Um, again, it's a great intro, great chorus, great outro. Nothing was bad. Yeah, um, this song, I think, it has, like, the the most extreme like uh instrumentation yeah. in the whole album mm-hmm. like his vocals Matt's vocals are like you know kind of like the same style but like the music underneath is nuts like i'm like half the song is double bass he has some blasts some guitar harmonies I'm telling in there. you man Alex is insane like he he brings trivium to another level and i think that this is since since his first album I mean, you can tell like this was a different trivium in terms of like now they've like they're complete. So it's not that they had a bad drummer before; they've always had good drummers. But I felt like they didn't have a drummer that was on the level that that uh, trivium and say uh, or, I'm sorry, Matt and uh, say Corey and and Paula were on as like guitarists, right? And I, I felt that the drummer was just slightly behind. And now it's like. That he's on their level as a drummer compared yeah. to them as 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 a guitarist. So it was extremely extremely uh, crazy to hear all of them doing their thing at the same time. Yeah, I think Alex definitely pushes them to, you know, try to do better because that dude. It seems like there's nothing he can't do. Like God damn, there's so many fills in this song. It's just or this album is just crazy. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the album. So. Overall, um, this is a fucking damn good album. Yeah, this is this is an easy mm, top top 
Mm, top three. Yeah, I think this is a top three album. So it's still like brand new, so I don't really know how I feel about it in like my placement. I, I, I can already tell you, like I've only listened to it once. I think this will be top three, easy. Sweet ass album. Uh, that's it for us. Um, except uh, next week or maybe the week after that, I'm gonna rank all the albums as soon as I listen to this album enough times, so where I can put it somewhere. But I, I can guarantee it's gonna be like top four, yeah, easy. Yeah, it's, it's no it's doubt. It's up there. All right, tune in next time. All right. Peace. See you later.